Hi, I'm Paris Small. I'm at the start of my career, early careers. I'm a software engineering degree apprentice. So if you don't know what degree apprenticeship is, it's basically um, I'm getting a degree, bachelor's in science, but I'm also just most of my time working. So the split is 80%. I'm working for a company, Jaguar Land Rover, automotive in, um, industry, but I'm not necessarily doing automotive engineering. It's more software based. And 20% of my time, I am studying my bachelor's um, at the University of Warwick. So in the UK, it's actually a top 10 university. It has a really good thing for STEM. Um, WMG is a really good group there. And yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Software engineering specifically in the company. I work in the um, electrification department with all the electric vehicles and hybrids. I do get to actually go hands on with them, but also mostly is kind of the technical aspect. So the software engineering of that. So with engineering, like Stephanie said, engineering in general, you've got so many different aspects as not necessarily the electrical engineer or manufacturing engineer or um, a um, what's mechanical engineer, software engineering. I spend a lot of my time actually behind the computer, but also hands on in the vehicle as well, making sure that what's going on there is working in that aspect. So yeah, it's a four year course. I leave it with four years work experience at a good company and also a degree that I haven't had to pay for it's paid for by the company and the government so it's definitely a benefit and it's a lot of degree apprenticeships that I know my specific course is digital technology solutions it's offered all around the UK not necessarily just for um, automotive industry I've got a couple of friends that work for BT Vodafone all these different companies that offer the same course that you can do um, on an engineering degree that is basically paid for you obviously are getting a salary as well because you're working most of your time and also you get that experience. So a degree apprenticeship is definitely a good way of getting in. And there's loads of different ones in the engineering space. But yeah, so I just touch a bit on when I started in 2019, obviously as an apprentice, apprentices, there's that narrative that you kind of obviously you come in quite low as early careers. But as I've worked through the company for four years now, my manager's given me my own responsibility to lead my own team delivering a new future. And that's just because as an apprentice, I'm there most of my time and I'm really learning from the ground up. So it's a good opportunity to get in like and kind of really, really shape your career. And once you've got once you've got your degree, you're finishing and whether you want to stay at the company or go to a different company, you've already got that work experience and the skills, knowledge, behaviours, etc. My spare time, I'm also an ambassador for STEM careers, which is why I think um, Zoe, I'm grateful to be here today because I speak to a lot of um, students and um uh, like po 16 which is like a level students and 16 year old college students for stephanie um that you'd know that really kind of just want some guidance because like you said it's a male dominated field they don't really kind of know what then they kind of just want a role model to go into kind of okay how are you doing what are you doing so i've created some social media platforms speak to quite a lot of a level students quite a lot help them with their cvs want to get into apprenticeships want to get into stem careers and just really kind of want to make that change from now at the start of my career because when I was applying one of the main things was kind of almost yeah you'll get that apprenticeship obviously you're a woman they need women but it's like that imposter syndrome I don't want the job because I'm a woman I want the job because I deserve the job and mm -hmm. um, so getting women to and young um, students to basically see that you can do the role and you're not just kind of a tick box exercise with there and it's actually data that proves diverse teams thrive more specifically with women women um, managers and leaders certain aspects of fields they um, produce kind of better areas in engineering and in certain different spaces as well so it makes sense to have women in your team hiring women and because they deserve the role not just to fill a yeah I think one of the main things and it's not changed same with STEM same with apprenticeship it's kind of almost um, you hear the word engineer and you've got a persona of a man in some type of work uniform like you said getting your hands dirty and you hear the word apprentice and you think blue collar industry kind of kind of the low, those low level job roles but it's actually not the case and I think what companies universities can really do is really showing maybe day in the life of what uh, an apprentice or an engineer looks like for different roles different sectors social media is everything nowadays and not just necessarily social media like Instagram but like LinkedIn or blogs of people actually talking about what they actually do the amount of times someone will come up to me also you're a software engineer what do you actually do and I tell them and they're like wow I didn't realize that you could kind of do that or that was something that I could do and it's like yeah um it actually is and just a lot of 
because I speak for like um, early careers because I'm an early career a lot of people that I speak to don't know and won't apply for something unless they've already spoke to someone kind of what they're doing and they're kind of, okay that's kind of cool they won't just put their CV in for a job role and kind of hope for the best so having those kind of role models people like us actually like what you're doing Zoe and posting about this is what you can actually do engineering and this and have like engineering is so wide when you say engineer you could be an engineer for so much so many different types of things so going out there and actually having people in different roles talking about what they actually do in a closed space posting on social medias linkedin blogs doing webinars like this actually getting to speak to people so young students and other people in their careers that want to go into engineering actually understand what they can actually do Do you my kind of GCSEs, which is like high school, definitely, yeah. And then and my granddad lives in America, so I always have to cross over what the vocabulary language is here and there. And then when I did my um kind of A-levels, which is the two years before you actually get into college, I was doing maths, physics and computer science. And I know in the UK it's a lot, a lot more difficult because I know when you're going through, like it was so quite like A-levels here, they were harder than basically all of my university I'm not going to lie it was very very force force like you said and then when I got to university it was a lot more applied it was a lot more okay do you refer you could research do you papers and research so when I was in A-levels I was like okay I know I wanted to go into um, some type of STEM career um, English even though I did well in it it wasn't really kind of for me and my mum was always in my ear like engineering 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 and I was just like in my head I had that bias I was like I don't want to be an engineer like I don't see any positive things about it. There's nobody that looks like me in like senior positions. Um, so why would I put myself through that? And then I looked into kind of degree principles and it was like software engineering. I was like, okay, did a bit of research. And even like what Stephanie said, I don't code 24 seven. I don't set my laptop behind the screen and code, but I do get involved with additional things like speed clients, business cases, all these different things that you can do. And I was like, you know what, actually, this is more interested in, interesting for me. So I applied after I finished my A-levels, took a gap year and traveled, got onto it. And then it wasn't honestly until probably year one or two of the course that I'm on now. I was like, you know what, actually, yeah, I was kind of doing this because I knew I needed to do something. Like I finished, I was in my gap year I couldn't really kind of now I didn't want to just go into the job that I was at full time so I did it kind of applied and now it's like actually engineering what I'm in specifically engineering tech engineering specifically is a role that I could definitely see myself kind of pro progressing in purely just because the space I've been put in the people I've been able to network with is like I didn't realize you could do that and it's like you connect with them and you see what they're doing and it's like wow I want to get involved <laughs> And you can actually, because it's not just like your normal, not nine to five, but you actually have working experience, meeting people, going to events, seeing what they're doing and actually being like, OK, this is good because you can still build that professional personal development on the weekends and on the, in the evenings and go on, like you said, in the career field. So I would say literally probably when I was on this course, but I'm hoping that it changes because I know, like you said, when I was in my physics class and my computer science class, it was literally me and two, three other people that were women. So the hope is that people like this can be role models because it starts way before that, because in the UK, women, all students have to choose their A-levels GCSEs in like year nine, which is like grade, mm -hmm. grade eight. Um, so by then they've already decided. So once they're in like their grades for like doing their GCSEs, if they've not picked math, physics, science, they're not going to go really into a career in engineering. So it's really targeting those younger from like seven six seven eight here to actually this is what you can actually do with work especially with the women and the young girls there so that they can actually see because if they don't pick an a level in a maths physics science the likelihood is they're not going to get into an engineering type course or a stem course at university and the likely people that people can obviously career change later on in life but we're trying to target like young people from now so it's mm -hmm. just about kind of being being role models for people which is kind of like why i'm doing what i'm doing Um, quite surreal. Um, I'm not going to lie. The Apprentice Award was kind of my um, cohort leads at work saying, oh, you've done a lot in the apprenticeship space. Nominate yourself. So I did. And I actually nominated myself um, and got nominated for a different award that I won, which was only a couple of weeks, couple of weeks ago now, which is a service story. When I submitted my application for that, they messaged me saying, apply for the women in tech one so that was the multicultural apprenticeship awards 
which is amazing and Prenship Awards. I won the engineering and manufacturing category. I'm going to send you the um, information on that. And they, they had other categories there on the night. So like accounting and finance, law, and all these things. And all the winners of that went into win Apprentice of the Year. And I won that as well, which is honestly, when I speak, speak about it, it's just so surreal because I did not expect it whatsoever. I've been doing a lot of this and I'm just very, very grateful that I now have this, these achievements to be able to go out there and tell people you can really do things, especially with the Mid Midlands Women in Tech, because there were so many inspiring women in the field, in that room, so many amazing companies that were diamond sponsors that it's like, actually, it, that really motivated me to kind of do kind of create almost kind of like a career plan once I've kind of finished five year plan or whatever but it's just insane the amount of recognition that you can get if you really kind of put your mind to it so I would my my thing would be like if you're doing some things that you want to put yourself at average to speak to team they can nominate you you can nominate yourself for a lot of these awards there's only certain awards when they get like proper prestigious stuff you're obviously not allowed to nominate yourself for mm -hmm. but it's almost one of the ones where when you're doing that kind of above and beyond definitely getting that recognition for it because now when i'm speaking to people at schools or um social media people are messaging me kind of like oh my gosh that's amazing how did you get into it and it's because of that award that people are interested so it literally it's not the award and it's not the kind of um status and um not fame but like notability that i do it for i do it so that people can kind of see and then come to me and help if I help one person, two people, that's what really kind of like matters. So it really puts me in that place to have that platform to go out there and make a difference. So I'm so, so grateful for all of, all of the award organisers that and the judges that um, felt like I deserved to win. The specific course that I am on is Digital Technology Solutions. Um, you apply through the Jaguar Land River website. Um, what are you able to do is you're applying for a job, you're not applying for a university degree. If you're wanting to go to uni as well, there's no harm in doing that. Still create your UCAS account, personal statement, etc. But look into the companies and apply through the companies. If you want any kind of help, reach out to me, connect with me on LinkedIn. I've got an Instagram account as well. I don't know if you're, if you're sharing details. I can give them to you yeah, yeah. to share. And like, reach out, get your CV up to scratch. If you want help with your CV, I'm happy to help with that. Um, and just kind of showcase what you can bring to the company, whether that's on a degree apprenticeship or whether you've already got your degree and you want to work for them as a grad, or you want to go into engineering or tech, and there's anything, like I'm definitely happy to help because um, but why not? I don't really see anything better to do with my kind of spare time than speaking to people because it's really, you get that experience. They learn from me and I also learn from them because it's new generations coming in that have different mindsets for everything. I've learned so much from speaking to people. But yeah, my specific one is on the website, Applications open in January, just a small plug there. Um, if, you want to apply, if you want to apply, um, but if you want to apply to any degree apprenticeship or any kind of STEM program, usually go on um, like their website and type in, get a real feel for the company. And once it comes down to interviews, just really be yourself and show kind of what you as an individual are going to bring to the company rather than kind of um, prepping any kind of interview questions go there, do you research on what the company goals are, what the company strategy is, and really align what your questions are saying with what the what what it says on their website.